No good. There's nothing here out of the ordinary. Computer, we'd like to browse the database for information on weapons using symbological genetics. No matching data found. Damn! Does the data even exist? Uncle Robert wouldn't lie. The data must be in here somewhere. She's right. Don't give up yet. I know. I know. Computer, scan my genetic profile and search the database for any matching data. Scanning. Searching. One result found. Bingo! Display. The coming crisis for humanity? Let's check it out. Yeah. My dad and Uncle Robert? They're pretty young, but I think you're right. Mom. That woman on the end? Yes. That's her. This project was initiated as a result of the exploration of the planet Styx in galactic year 752. Styx is an unusual planet on which explorers found the Time Gate, a portal that seems to be a sort of time machine. A full-scale study of Styx and the Time Gate was undertaken in 752. The Time Gate is sentient. That was about all we knew about it based on our research up to that point. No one yet knew who had created the time gate or for what purpose. However, all became clear after the study conducted in galactic year 752. Never heard about this before. Something this big should have been major news. After an investigation extending over several weeks, we have discovered that the time gate responds to symbological data, and it was recently discovered that when certain special symbological data are sent into the time gate, it is possible to obtain recorded data from the time gate itself. However, included in these data was information more horrifying than we could have imagined. We learned of the existence of 4D beings. 4D? four-dimensional entities, possessing technology far more advanced than our own, including the ability to travel through time. Furthermore, as we continued our research, we found out that these beings may actually have created our universe. Created? Sounds like a fairy tale to me. Shh, quiet. The symbological technology that we use today originated with these beings. The time gate on the planet Styx was also created by using their advanced symbological technology. We had thought that the time gate was a portal for traveling through time, but it appears we were wrong. The time gate is in fact a door to 4D space. Time travel was a phenomenon that occurred as a result of the protective measures taken to prevent us from detecting the existence of 4D space. The 4D universe allows free movement through time, and the time gate tapped into that potential. This was a most exciting discovery. Not only were we able to unravel the mystery of the time gate, we were also able to confirm the existence of a new species. But then, something completely unexpected happened. The time gate spoke a warning. Resign thyself. 
Doctor, the time gate. What in the world? Science, Science and the eternal and the sphere, sphere has advanced too advanced far. far. This cannot this be, can left be left unchecked. unchecked. Eternal sphere? The eternal sphere is the universe as known to your kind. Timegate, tell us what you mean. Our science has advanced too far? Symbological genetics is the science of the creator, as is the symbology on which it is based. It is a forbidden art. Your kind has foolishly trespassed into a forbidden domain. There is a danger that this forbidden technology will be turned against the Creator. Thus, the time is near when he shall unleash the wrath of his enforcers upon you all. We were terrified by the Time Gate's warning. The Creator was going to destroy his creations. It appeared that the Armageddon prophesied by numerous religions was going to come true. We asked whether we could escape annihilation by abandoning symbological genetics, but the Time Gate's reply completely crushed all our hopes. It is too late. Too late. Even should you abandon your work, another will come to take it up again. Such is the way of your kind. You are contaminated beyond salvation. Your annihilation is inevitable. This is not a warning. This is a sentence. Resign thyselves. Resign thyselves. Resign thyselves. We return to Moonbase, stunned. This entity, beyond our understanding, had proclaimed our doom. At first, we considered reporting this to the top levels of the Federation government. But it was too outrageous. We knew that no one would believe us. Our choice was either to reconcile ourselves to the Creator's wish for our destruction, or to fight to the bitter end. We chose the path of resistance. We would not accept our death sentence. If we are to die, we'll die fighting. Be that as it may, our enemy was the creator of our universe. How could we face an enemy who possessed absolute power to fight? We needed a tremendous power of our own. We decided to use symbological genetics in an attempt to create a weapon, a human with powers that could defeat the creator. This was our project. Two children were selected to be the subjects of our experiments. I am sure there is no way we could ever apologize enough to these children. No way we could ever earn their forgiveness. People may label us as monsters. Nevertheless, we feel that this research, and this research alone, has a chance of saving us all. These children are our hope. That would be us. The computations we ran on the data obtained from the time gate indicate that the Creator's power is phenomenal. We gave one child the power to destroy, the destruction gene. To the other child, we gave the power of change, the alteration gene. However, we do not expect that the powers of these two children alone are enough to stand up to the 4D being known as the Creator. We believe our survival rests on one thing. We must enter 4D space and defeat the Creator. That is why we have decided to give the next child, Professor Esteed's child, the power to connect space, the connection gene. She will be able to use this symbological genetic power to create a path through the time gate and into 4D space. What? This unborn child is the key to unlocking our enemy's gates. Sophia, you too? No. 
It can't be. I... The children's powers will not flower immediately. However, when these three children come together, their different special symbological genes will resonate, and it should be possible for them to utilize their powers. Beyond this, they must learn control by applying their powers in combat. I am planning to talk to the children directly when the time comes. But if something should happen to me, please, whoever is watching this video, let them know. I apologize for asking this of you, but there is a great deal at stake. What we did was inhumane and forbidden by Federation law. We could never apologize enough to our children, the subjects of these experiments. Did we do the right thing? This is a question I find myself unable to answer. I'm sure we'll find out when the final day of judgment arrives. If the children choose annihilation, not to use their powers, then so be it. These powers belong to the children, and it is up to them to decide how to use them. Finally, I have something I want to say to our children. I feel horrible for making you bear this heavy burden. I will not ask for your forgiveness. I only ask that you choose your own path. Think, decide, act for yourselves. Even if you choose to fight, even if you choose to accept annihilation, that is all we, your self-indulgent parents, desire for. I think it had to be us. They believed we could do it. I gotta be honest. I still don't really understand what's going on. But it's obvious our parents left the future in our hands. Our genes have determined our destinies. That might have been true until now. But like my dad said, the choice is in our hands now. Mm-hmm. We going? To the planet Sticks! <laughs>